Okay, welcome back. We will continue our video series on medical terminology. In this video, we will go over chapter 12, uh, the reproductive system and obstetrics. Uh, learning objectives for this chapter. Define and spell the word parts used to create terms for the reproductive system and obstetrics. Uh, break down and define common medical terms used for symptoms, diseases, uh, disorders, procedures, treatments, and devices associated with uh, the system and obstetrics. Build medical terms from the word parts associated with the system. And lastly, pronounce and spell common medical terms associated with the reproductive system and obstetrics. We'll start off with some anatomy, physiology, and some uh, word parts, some common combining forms that you'll see. see the first one, amnio or amniano, is a reference to the amniotic sac, the sac that surrounds the developing embryo. Andro is a reference to male. Bolano is a reference to the glans penis or the head of the penis. Cervico is a reference to the cervix or the neck. And choreo is a reference to the chorion, which is the outermost membrane of a fetus. Our next one, Siezo, or Siezio, is a reference to being pregnant. Embryo is a reference to an embryo. Epididymo is a reference to the epididymis. Episio is a reference to the vulva. Fido is a reference to a fetus. Gravido or gravidar is a reference to uh, pregnancy. Mamo is a reference to the breast, and masto is also a reference to the breast. Meno or menstruo is a reference to uh, menstruation or menses. Orkio or orkido is a reference to the testes. Pino is a reference to the penis. Prostato is a reference to the prostate gland, and semino is a reference to semen. Spermo or spermato is a reference to sperm cells. Testo is a reference to a testes. Same thing for testiculo, also a reference to the testicles or the testes. Urethro is a reference to the urethra. And vaso is a reference to a vessel or a duct. All right, now we'll talk about some anatomy physiology of the system. The general function of the reproductive system is the creation of offspring. And this occurs when you have the union of two gametes. And gametes is another term for a sex cell. So the gamete from a male would be a sperm cell. And a gamete from a female would be the egg or also known as the ovum. So when we get the sperm fertilizing egg, that fertilized egg is the origin of a new human life. All right, some basic uh, structures of the male reproductive system. You have these uh, spermatozoa, which is the formal name for the sperm cells. You have the testes, or also known as the testicles. They also have other organs that include uh, the scrotum, uh, the penis, the epididymis, the vas deferens, urethra, the seminal vesicles, uh, the prostate glands, and also the bulbal urethral glands. And as a lateral view of a of the male reproductive system. The penis here, and the testes here. On top of that would be the epididymis, and the vas deferens. It goes all the way around the urinary bladder. Uh, seminal vesicles, a prostate gland, and then the urethra is the tube that conveys both urine and uh, semen for the male. All right, for the female reproductive system, you have the ova, which is a plural form of ovum, which is another term for the eggs, of uh, the ovaries. And you have other structures such as the fallopian tubes, uh, the uterus, uh, the vagina, and the vulva. See some terms that you'll see when it comes to the reproductive system. Uh, prenatal development is a term given to the, the embryo and the fetus as it develops before the baby is born. Anything that happens before birth is considered prenatal. And the next term, OB, uh, obstetrics, is a field of medicine that deals with uh, childbirth and then caring for women who are going through childbirth. Here's a, a sagittal view of the female reproductive system. You have the opening to the vagina here. The vagina is here. Uh, the cervix leads to the uterus here, which is right on top of the bladder here. And it's hard to get a perspective in this view because the fallopian tubes would be coming out at you three-dimensionally. And then the ovary is here, one of the ovaries here. And here's a, another view of some of the pelvic organs for the female. This would be the, the end of the uh, vagina here, the cervix here. All this would be the, the uterus. Uh, this tube and this tube are the fallopian tubes. And ovaries on either side. There are some medical terms for the system and for obstetrics. Uh, the first one, reproductive medicine. It's a field of medicine that deals with the diagnosis and the management and the prevention of uh, reproductive issues, or reproductive problems. Urology. It's a field of medicine that deals with the functions and disorders of the urinary system. Someone who specializes in this field of medicine would be a urologist. Gynecology is a field of medicine that deals uh, specifically with the functions and diseases of the female reproductive system. And someone who specializes in this field would be a gynecologist. Our next term, STIs, 
stands for sexually transmitted infections, formerly known as STDs, or sexually transmitted diseases. These are diseases that are passed from person to person uh, through sexual contact. All right, now we'll talk about uh, the male reproductive system, uh, some signs and symptoms uh, in the word parts. Prefix A means lacking or without. Some common combining forms you'll see with the male reproductive system. Bolano is a reference to the glans penis, which is the head of the penis. Oligo means few. Orchio or keto is a reference to the testes. Uh, prostato is a reference to the prostate gland. Spermo is a reference to the sperm cells. Testo is a reference to the testes. Urethro is a reference to the urethra. And zoo is a reference to animal life in general. Uh, some common suffixes. Algia is a reference to uh, painful. Ia is a condition. Itis means the inflammation of. And urea is a, a flow or a discharge. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, particular signs and symptoms of the male system. Our first two terms are related, but they're very different in one key way. Uh, the first one, aspermia. This is the inability to produce or ejaculate semen. And semen is not just the sperm cells itself, but is the sperm cells plus the secretions from the seminal vesicles, the prostate glands, and the bulbal urethral glands. So all that collectively together is known as semen. So aspermia is not being able to produce semen or not be able to ejaculate semen. Now related to that will be our next term, azoospermia. In this condition, there's an absence of living sperm cells within semen. You have a fluid being ejaculated, but there are no sperm cells in it. See our next term, balanorrhea. We're going to break down that term. Balano is a reference to the glans penis, the head of the penis, and urea is a discharge. This is a discharge from the head of the penis. And our next term, chancre. This is a type of painless ulcer. It's usually one that develops on the genitals. This is very commonly found with the sexually transmitted infections, uh, like syphilis, for example. So our next term, oligospermia. This is a male fertility issue where there's a, a low amount of sperm concentration within the ejaculate. Papilloma. This is a small growth that looks like a wart, and it's found on the skin or on a mucous membrane, usually benign. So our next term, prostatus is the inflammation of the prostate gland. Prostatoria, this is an abnormal discharge from the prostate gland. Testalgia, this is a pain in the testicles. Another term for, for this condition would be orchialgia, also being called orchidalgia. So all three of those terms reference uh, the same condition, having a long-term pain in the testes. Urethritis, is inflammation of the urethra. All right, now we'll talk about some common uh, diseases and disorders of the male system and the word parts. First, the prefixes. An means lacking or without. Hyper means above. Uh, para means nearby or alongside or local. Combining forms that you'll see. Andro is a reference to male. Milano is a reference to the glans penis. Crypto is a reference to a crypt or being hidden. Epididymo is a reference to the epididymis, the structure where sperm cells go to mature. And hydro is a reference to water. Orchio or orchido is a reference to the testes. Prostato, reference to the prostate gland. And varico is a reference to varicose veins. Some common suffixes. Seal is a reference to a, a hernia. Ism is a process or a condition. Itis is the inflammation of. Pathy is a reference to a disease. And plasia is a reference to a formation or development. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, specific diseases and disorders of the male system. Our first term, andropathy. This is any disease that is... Uh, particular for only males. You know, a good example of that would be uh, prostatus. The only males have a prostate gland. Females do not. So that's a condition that can only be found in males. Anarchism. This is the absence of the testes. Balanitis. Inflammation of the glans penis, or the head of the penis. See, the next two terms are very related. Uh, BPH, a benign prostatic hyperplasia, is a, a formal term for an enlarged prostate. This could also be referenced by uh, the term benign prostatic hypertrophy. They both reference the same thing, a swollen prostate gland. So our next term, cryptorchidism. This is a condition where the testes have failed to dis fully descend outside of the body. So your next term, epididymitis. This is an inflammation of the epididymis. And when this inflammation involves not only the, the epididymis, but also the testes, then that condition would be called orchiepididymitis. And if you have an inflammation of just the testes, either one or both, that would be our last term here, orchitis. All right, this illustration, we have an example of uh, BPH, benign uh, prosthetic hyperplasia. 
and the reason why it's called hyperplasia, you have an overdevelopment of the cells of the prostate gland. So as these extra cells are being made, what happens is the prostate gland will end up squeezing on the urethra. This is why men who have a swollen prostate or prostate issues in general feel like they have to pee all the time. In this illustration, we have an example of cryptorchidism, where normally the testes would fully descend outside of their body by the time the baby is born. But in this condition, the testes remain in the abdomen. They can either remain in the abdomen or remain in the pelvic cavity, but in either case, they are not fully descended yet. In this example, we have a partial cryptochidism, where one testis does descend properly, but the other one does not. So for this boy, the right testis is fine, but the left testis has not descended yet. Our next condition, ED, erectile dysfunction. This is a condition where the male has a inability to maintain a, an erection sufficiently. And a form of erectile dysfunction is impotence. This is a condition where the, the male cannot achieve or maintain an erection or the ability to ejaculate. So our next term, hydrocele. This is a, an accumulation of fluid within, the, within a body sac. So for this system, this is a reference to the buildup of fluid uh, around the testicle. So our next term, uh, Peyronie disease. In this condition, you have uh, fibrous scar tissue that develops inside the penis. That will give the penis a, a curved and a painful erection. So your next term, uh, phimosis. This is a condition that is a reference to the foreskin. And the foreskin is, is wrapped around the penis uh, so tightly that it cannot be retracted. So it cannot be pulled back. And something related to this is our next term, paraphimosis. In this condition, the foreskin is able to be pulled back behind the head of the penis, the glans penis. But after that point, it cannot be retracted back to its regular position. So it gets trapped behind the glans penis. And when this happens, it's cutting off blood flow to the glans penis. And our last term here, uh, priapism. This is a, a prolonged and painful erection. Uh, prostate cancer. This is a cancer of the prostate gland, also known as uh, prostatic carcinoma. A testicular carcinoma. This is cancer within the testicles. A testicular torsion. This is the twisting of the spermatic cord, which is the structure that uh, supports the testes uh, within the scrotum. So as this twist around, the blood supply is cut off from the testicles. And our last term here, a varicocele. This is a collection of varicose veins that are found in the spermatic cord. So an enlargement of the veins within the scrotum, basically. All right, in this illustration, we have an example of testicular torsion. This is how the structures should look. You have the penis here, uh, testis here, the epididymis lies right on top of the testis, and then the extension of the epididymis here. But when that gets twisted around, that's what's called testicular torsion. So the more and more this tube twists, the more restriction of blood flow there will be you know, to the testis, and to the scrotum, and the other surrounding tissues. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, treatments and procedures and devices of the male reproductive system. We'll start off with uh, some word parts. Uh, the first one's prefixes. Anti means against. Poly means more than one. Trans means across or through. Uh, some common combining forms you'll see. Milano means a glans penis. Cysto is a cyst or a fluid-filled sac. Hydro is a reference to water. And orchio or orchido is a reference to the testes. Prostato is a reference to the prostate gland. Urethro is a reference to the urethra. Uro is a reference to urine. Vaso is a reference to a vessel or a duct. And vesiculo is a reference to the seminal vesicles. Suffixes. Al means pertaining to. Seal is a herniation. Ectomy is the surgical removal of. And logi is the study of. Uh, pexy means to put in place or to fixate. Plasty is a surgical repair of. Stomy is a, the creation of an artificial opening. And tomy is the process of cutting into. Uh, now I'll we'll talk about some uh, specific treatments and procedures and devices for the male system. Uh, the first one, anti-impotence therapy. This is any type of therapy that is used to treat the condition of uh, impotence. Balanoplasty is a surgical repair of the glans penis. Uh, circumcision is the removal of the foreskin of the penis. So our next term, DRE, a digital rectal examination. This is where a, a finger is inserted into the rectum. Our next term, hydrocelectomy, is the surgical removal of a hydrocele. All right, this illustration, we have an example of a DRE, a digital rectal exam. This would be the uh, the rectum. 
This would be the prostate gland. This would be the, the male's urinary bladder. So the finger is inserted into the rectum. Usually to feel around to see if anything feels abnormal. A good way to check for any prostate issues that a male may have. See our next term, orchiectomy. is the surgical removal of one or both of the testes. Another term for this procedure would be a castration. See our next term, orchidopexy. This is a procedure that's done to remove an undescended uh, testy and then it's uh, fixated into place. Orchidoplasty is a surgical repair of a testy. And to do so, you need to cut into, you need to cut into a testis. And that procedure would be an orchidotomy. Let's see our next term, a penile implant. This is where some type of uh, prosthesis is, is inserted into the penis. It's usually done for males who have erect, erectile dysfunction. Let's see our next term, a prostatectomy is a surgical removal of the prostate gland. All right, this illustration, we have a example of a penile implant. You see this light blue colored flexible tube would be inserted into the shaft of the penis. And by doing so, it would provide a, a partial erection that is always there. See, another type of penile implant would, would, would include one that has uh, an inflatable cylinder. So this tube would be inserted into the shaft of the penis. And then when a pump is activated, that would cause the penis to become erect. And this example has the same type of uh, penile implant with a, with a pump, but this pump is hand activated. See our next term, PSA, prostate specific antigen. This is an enzyme that is produced by the prostate in very, very high concentration and is found in the blood of men with prostate cancer. So checking for levels of PSA is a quick and easy blood test to check for the possibility of prostate cancer. And that'll be related to our next term, TURP, transurethral uh, resection of the prostate gland. This is a procedure that is done to is done to relieve moderate to severe urinary symptoms caused by an enlarged prostate. All right, in this illustration, we have an example of how TURP would look. And in this procedure, what you're really doing is you are removing a section of the prostate gland. So this is done as a way to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia. So if there's less prostatic tissue there, there's less of a chance for swelling. This will reduce the pressure against the urethra. So this will lead to an increased flow of urine. Uh, urology, the field of medicine that deals with the study of the urinary tract. Someone who focuses in this field or specializes in this field would be a urologist. Uh, sterile, this is the inability to produce offspring or being incapable of reproduction. And our last term here, vasectomy. This is a medical procedure where you are removing a part of the vas deferens. So this is a form of uh, birth control for a male. Here's how that procedure would be done. The vas deferens is found an incision is made to basically cut it off. Otherwise, a vasectomy is a surgical removal of the vas deferens. Then the two ends are either cauterized or they're tied off for one another, so they can't join back together. Now, if this isn't done correctly, the two ends can grow back together. So it's important that both of these separate ends are cauterized completely. After those ends are, are cauterized, the vas deferens is put back into the scrotum, and then the patient is sewed up again. Our next term, vasostomy. This is a procedure where a vasectomy is partially reversed. So when you have a vasectomy, you can do two things to the vas deferens. You can either cauterize both ends, which makes it a more permanent solution, or you can basically tie off the ends. So if the male, at some point in the future, wants to have the procedure reversed, all you have to do is untie those ends and sew the ends back together. So it is possible to reverse a vasectomy if it's done in that way. If the ends are cauterized or burned off, then it can't be reversed. And our next term, vesiculectomy. This is the surgical removal of the seminal vesicles. All right, now we'll talk about uh, the female reproductive system, uh, some signs and symptoms. We'll start off uh, with some word parts. Uh, the prefixes, a means lacking or without. Dis means painful or abnormal. Poly means more than one. Copo is reference to the vagina. Hemato is reference to blood. Hydro is reference to water. Leuco is a reference to white. And both mammo and masto, both of those are reference to the breast. Meno is a reference to uh, menstruation or the menses. Metro is a reference to the uterus. Oligo is a reference to a few. Pio is a reference to pus. Salpingo is a reference to the fallopian tube. Uh, some common suffixes. Algia and dynia, both are reference to pain. Aragia is a bursting forth of blood. Aria is a discharge or a flow. Salpinx is a reference to the uh, fallopian tube. All right, now we'll talk about some signs and symptoms of the female reproductive system. 
The first one, amenorrhea. This is an abnormal absence of menstruation. So having one or more missed periods. Here, our next term, copodynia. This is a reference to having pain in the vagina. And something that would uh, lead to this condition would be our next term, uh, dyspareunia, which is having uh, difficult or having painful sexual intercourse. And our next term, uh, dysmenorrhea. If we were to break down this term, uh, dys means painful. Meno is menstruation. Then urea is a discharge. So dysmenorrhea is having a painful menstruation. See, our next term, hematosalpinx. This is having blood in the fallopian tube. Our next term, hydrosalpinx. This is the buildup of, of, of fluid in the fallopian tube, usually caused by an infection or an injury. Our next term, leucorrhea. This is having a this is having a whitish discharge from the vagina. Mastalgia. This is another term for having a pain in the breast. Our next term, menorrhagia. This is having an abnormally uh, heavy bleeding during menstruation. So next term, metrorrhagia. This is having an abnormal bleeding uh, from the uterus. In particular, uh, in between menstrual periods. So our next term, middle smears. This is actually a German word that means middle pain. But this is a reference to having one-sided lower abdominal pain. And it's often associated with ovulation. So yeah, next term, oligomenorrhea. This is having light or infrequent menstrual periods. And last term here, pyosalpinx. This is an accumulation of pus within the fallopian tube. All right, now we'll talk about some diseases and disorders in the female system. We'll start off with uh, some word parts. Uh, first, the prefixes. A means lacking or without. Endo means inside. X would be outside. X means away from or out. Poly means more than one. And pre means before. Some common combining forms you'll see. Cervico is a reference to the cervix or neck. Calpo is a reference to the vagina. Cysto is a reference to a fluid filled sac or a cyst. Fibro is a reference to any type of fiber. And hystero is a reference to the uterus. Lyo is a reference to smooth. Mamo and masto, both are reference to the breast. Metri or metro is a reference to the uterus. Myo is a reference to muscle. Oforo is a reference to an ovary. And same is true for our last term, overo, is also a reference to an ovary. Recto is a reference to the rectum. Salpingo is a reference to a fallopian tube. Vagino is a reference to the vagina. Vesico is a reference to the urinary bladder. And vulvo is a reference to the vulva. Some common suffixes you'll see. Al means pertaining to. Atresia means a closure or an occlusion. Seal is a herniation. Ia means a condition. And ick means pertaining to. Itis is an inflammation of. Oma is a reference to a tumor. Osis is an abnormal condition. Pathy is a reference to a disease. Ptosis is a drooping or a sagging. And suffix of just the letter S is an indicator of a plural form of a word. All right, now we'll talk about some specific diseases and disorders of the female system. So our first one, amastia. This is a condition where the uh, breast tissue and nipple and areola are absent. And the other extreme of this condition would be our next term, polymastia. If we were to break down that term, poly means many, masto means breast, and ia is a condition of. So this is having more than two breasts present. Uh, next term, uh, breast cancer. is a very general term regarding the cancer of the breast. And a version of that would be our next term, IDC, infiltrating ductal carcinoma, also known as invasive ductal carcinoma. It's a type of cancer that has begun, has begun growing in the duct and then has invaded uh, the fatty tissue of the breast outside of that duct. And it's the most common type of uh, breast cancers. So our next term, a CIS, a carcinoma in situ of the cervix. It's called in situ because that means the cancerous cells have remained in the place where they've uh, developed. They haven't moved on to other types of tissue. They have stayed confined to where they have developed from. So this is a cervical cancer, but in the very early stages. And this stage is also referred to as stage zero cancer. And this condition is caused by our next term, dysplasia. This is where you have a development of abnormal cells on the surface of the cervix. So these cells are abnormal but not cancerous yet. They have the potential to develop into something cancerous if not detected and treated early enough. Now if these abnormal cells continue to grow, that leads you to our, our next term, CIN, 
cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. These are where cells are transforming to pre-malignant cells. So it's not cancer yet, but it's getting closer to that point. Let's see our next term, cervicitis. It's an inflammation of the cervix. This is related to our next term, endocervicitis. This is the inflammation of the innermost portion of the cervix. Cystocele. This is a bulge of the bladder uh, into the vagina. And related to that will be the next term, a rectocele. This is where you have a, a herniation of the front wall of the rectum into the vagina. The endometrial cancer. This is cancer of the endometrium, which is the innermost lining of the uterus. The endometriosis. This is a condition where you have uh, the appearance of the endometrial tissue uh, outside of the uterus. This will cause a great amount of uh, pelvic pain. Endometritis. This is the inflammation of the endometrium. So our next term, fibrocystic breast disease. This is a, a benign condition where the woman has uh, painful lumps in the breast. Now this isn't a dangerous condition, but it can become bothersome or it can become uh, uncomfortable. A fistula. A fistula is a, a permanent abnormal passageway between two organs in the body or between an organ and the exterior of the body. See, an example of that would be a retrovaginal fistula. This is a connection between the, uh, the rectum and the vagina. So that passageway would not normally be there. See, another example would be uh, the next term, vesicovaginal fistula. This is a connection between uh, the vagina and the bladder. In our next term, hysteratresia. This is a condition where you have a closure of the uterus. Right, in this illustration, we have an example of a rectovaginal fistula. The rectum would be right here, and the vagina would be here. So those two should not be connected at all. But when you have this abnormal passageway being created, that space right there would be the fistula. In our next term, lyomyoma. This is a name for a benign tumor of the smooth muscle. And it's the type of muscle that's found on the uterus. And a lyomyoma of a uterus is usually called a fibroid. Um, mastitis is the inflammation of the breast. And our last term here, mastoptosis, this is a, a sagging or a drooping of the breast. All right, in this image, we have examples of a fibroid tumor, leomyomas of the uterus. And these round structures tend to be uh, hard and solid, but these are benign structures. Yeah, our next term, ooferopathy. This is a general term that references any disease of the ovary. Ooferitis is the inflammation of the ovaries. And our last term here, ooferosalpingitis. We're going to break down that term. Ooforo is an ovary. Salpingo is a fallopian tube. And itis is the inflammation of. So this condition is the inflammation of the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. See, ovarian cancer cancer uh, within the ovaries. Ovarian cyst is the development of a cyst, a fluid-filled sac within the ovary. Now this can lead to the development of next condition, polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is caused by uh, the levels of estrogen and progesterone become uh, way off balance. And this will lead to the development of multiple cysts throughout the ovary. And something that is related to that is our next term, parovarian cyst. This is where you have the the growth of a cyst, that fluid-filled sac, very nearby the ovary, but is not attached to it. It is nearby the ovary. That's why it's pear ovarian cyst. So our next term, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. This is an inflammation of the genital tract of the female, usually caused by the spread of bacteria from the vagina to the uterus and the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. A PMS, a premenstrual syndrome. This covers a large number of uh, symptoms that some women experience just before uh, the beginning of menstruation. Now, some symptoms could be acne or tender breast or bloating, mood changes, irritability. Any number of things can be included with PMS. Our next term, a prolapsed uterus. This is a condition where the, the muscles and ligaments of the pelvic floor have become stretched out and weakened. So the uterus actually will slip down and protrude out or stick out of the vagina. Another term for this condition is the next term listed, hysterotosis, a drooping or a sagging of the uterus. The next term, salpingitis, is an inflammation of the fallopian tube. All right, this image, we have an example of a prolapsed uterus. You see the uterus here would normally be anchored up a little bit higher up here 
in the cavity. The strength this isn't there anymore to help anchor it. So it starts to sag in or droop into the, the vagina, which is what's going on right here. So this is how it begins. If the situation gets uh, severe, it'll end up looking like this. Where this is a severely prolapsed uterus, where it's very visible like this. So our next term, salpingocele. This is a herniation of the fallopian tube. And our next term, TSS, toxic shock syndrome. This is an, an acute septicemia uh, in women. And this is a, a life-threatening condition. Uh, vaginitis, the inflammation of the vagina, also known as uh, colpitis. And a version of vaginitis is the next term listed here, atrophic vaginitis. This is inflammation of the vagina, but it's caused by the, the thinning and the shrinking of the tissues of the vagina. The tissue is atrophying away, and that is causing the inflammation. Vulvitis is inflammation of the vulva, and vulvovaginitis is an inflammation of the vulva and of the vagina. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, treatments, procedures, and devices of the female system. First off, the word parts. Uh, prefixes, endo means inside. Trans means complete or, or through. Combining forms. Uh, cervico is a reference to the cervix or the neck. Copo is a reference to the vagina. The epizio is a reference to the vulva. Gyno or gynaco is a reference to a woman. Hystero is a reference to the uterus. Lapero is a reference to the abdominal wall. Mammo and masto both reference the breast. Metri is a reference to the uterus. Uforo is a reference to ovary. And patho is a reference to disease. Salpingo is a reference to the fallopian tube. Sono is a reference to sound. Vagino is a reference to the vagina. Volvo is a reference to the vulva. Common suffixes. Al is a reference to pertaining to. Ectomy is a surgical removal of. Gram is a record or the test results. Graphy is the recording process. Ick means pertaining to. Logist is a specialist. Logi is the study of. Pexi means to put in place or to fixate. Plasty is the surgical repair of. And Rafi is a reference to a suture. Scopy is the process of viewing. Stomy is the, the creation of an artificial opening. And Tomy is the process of cutting. All right, now we'll talk about some specific uh, treatments, procedures, and devices about the female system. Uh, first one, biopsy. This is an examination of tissue that's been taken from a living person. And it does so to detect the extent or the presence of any disease. An example of a biopsy will be our next term, uh, cervical conization. This is a reference to uh, the excision of a cone-shaped uh, tissue sample from the cervix. And the procedure that you would use to take out this particularly shaped uh, section of tissue would be our, our next term, LEEP. That stands for Loop Electrosurgical Excision Procedure. Our next term, cervicectomy. This is the surgical removal of the cervix. See our next term, uh, colpectomy. This is the surgical removal of part or all of the vagina. It can also be referenced as a vaginectomy. This is done in the treatment of certain types of cancers or in the transition of female to male uh, gender reassignment. The copoplasty is the surgical repair of the vagina. And to do that, you would need to, need to add sutures into the vagina. But that process would be called coporophy. Uh, coposcopy is a visual examination of the vagina and of the cervix and of the vulva. Their next term, uh, DNC, dilation and curtage. This is a surgical procedure where you have a dilation of the cervix and a curtage of the uterus. And this is done so for the uh, removal of a cyst or removal of tumors or the removal of the tissue after a miscarriage or uh, even during an abortion. And the, the actual instrument that you would use uh, in this process would be a curette. And this is the tool that you would use to uh, scrape off uh, tissue from the inside of the uterus. So our next term, endometrial ablation. This is a uh, surgical procedure that will destroy the inner lining of the uterus. The whole point of this is to reduce uh, menstrual flow, to, to treat uh, abnormal uterine bleeding. The gynecology, the field of medicine that deals with uh, the female reproductive tract. Someone who specializes in this field would be an OBGYN, obstetrician, and gynecologist. Gynopathology, this is a field of medicine that deals with the 
diseases of the uh, female reproductive tract. Someone who specializes in this field would be a gynopathologist. Is there a next term? HRT, hormone replacement therapy. This is when a woman is given hormones artificially because her body doesn't make them anymore, such as estrogen and progesterone in women who are postmenopausal. The body just doesn't make them in adequate levels anymore. So sometimes this, this lack of estrogen and lack of progesterone can cause uh, some women some, uh, some problems. So by taking an artificial source of this, this will help to treat those problems. The uh, hysterectomy is the surgical removal of the uterus, either of the entire structure or only parts of the uterus. Hysteropexy is a surgical procedure that will help to uh, surgically fixate an abnormally movable uterus. Next to images, we have examples of uh, surgeries that would involve the, uh, the uterus and the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. Uh, the first one is the hysterectomy, the removal of the uterus. For letter B, if a right salpingo ophorectomy, which is the removal of the uh, right ovary and the fallopian tube. So everything on the right hand side is taken out. For C, we have a bilateral uh, spingo ophorectomy. We have both fallopian tubes and both ovaries removed. That's why it's a bilateral. And for D, you have a bilateral panhysterectomy, which is the removal of everything. The uterus, both fallopian tubes, and both ovaries. The hysteroscope. This would be a tool that you would use to visualize uh, the uterus. In the process of viewing uh, the uterus would be hysteroscopy. The laparoscope, that'd be a tool that you would use to visualize the uh, abdominal wall. And that process of viewing uh, those structures would be the uh, laparoscopy. And here's an example of laparoscopy. So this whole process is laparoscopy. The tool that the doctor is using here would be the laparoscope, where it's inserted into the abdomen where you're able to view uh, the abdominal organs and the abdominal wall. So here next term, mammogram. This is the results that you get from a uh, mammography. So the actual image obtained from uh, mammography. And mammography is a a recording process of the breast. Mammoplasty would be a surgical repair of the breast. Uh, mastectomy is to be the surgical removal of the breast. And depending on how much tissue is removed, there are different names for those different procedures. The first one, a simple mastectomy. The entire breast tissue is removed. But the contents around it, the axillary contents, are, are untouched. So the breast is removed, but the lymph nodes are not. The, a radical mastectomy. This is a procedure where the breast and the underlying chest muscles and the lymph nodes are removed. A modified a radical mastectomy. This is where you have the removal of the breast, uh, the lymph nodes, but the underlying muscle, the pectoralis major, is left alone. So the only difference between the uh, modified radical mastectomy and a radical mastectomy, with the radical, you are taking out the pectoralis major muscle. For modified, you are not. And a lumpectomy, this is a removal of a lump of breast tissue. So this is typically done when uh, the cancer hasn't spread from a certain area. So you're only taking out the, the cancer-affected area of the breast. So you are literally taking out a lump of tissue and not the entire breast. This is how a mammogram would look. And you can see right here where this arrow is, this collection of tissue here would be a visible tumor. All right, this image, we have examples of a lumpectomy and a modified radical mastectomy. A lumpectomy, you're only taking out a lump of tissue where the cancer is found because it has not spread. And a modified radical mastectomy, you're taking out the breast tissue and the lymph nodes, but the underlying muscle is spared. The pectoralis major is still there. Ophorectomy is the surgical removal of an ovary. See our next term, uh, Papa Nicolau spear, more commonly called a pap smear. This is a diagnostic test to check for cervical cancers. Next term, salponectomy. The surgical removal of a fallopian tube. And if you remove the fallopian tube and also the ovary, that leads you to the next term, salpingo ophorectomy. Salpingopexy 
is the surgical fixation of a fallopian tube, sapingostomy. This is the creation of an artificial opening into the fallopian tube. It is done to unblock a fallopian tube. Uh, sonohysterography. This is a, a technique where fluid is injected into the, uh, the cervix of the uterus. And ultrasound is used to help, is used to show how well that the fluid is being uh, infused inside the uterus. And something similar to that, uh, transvaginal sonography, is using an ultrasound technique to examine the, uh, the uterus and the ovaries and the cervix. And the sound waves are done uh, through the vagina. So your next term, uh, tubal ligation. It's the formal name for when a woman has her tubes tied. To ligate something means to uh, tie off something. So the corresponding procedure to, or to a male would be a uh, vasectomy. So the fallopian tubes are, are taken out and then cut, and then the ends are cauterized off, or they're tied off for one another. So it's the same process as a vasectomy in males, but done to the fallopian tubes in females. So you have vaginal speculum. This is an instrument that's used to help widen the opening uh, to the vagina, so you can see the uh, cervix more easily. And the last term here, vulvectomy, is where you have the surgical removal of part or all of the vulva. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, obstetrical symptoms and signs, some word parts. The first, the prefixes, dis, uh, painful or abnormal. Hyper means above. Uh, poly means more than one. The amnio references the amniotic sac, which is the sac that surrounds the developing uh, fetus. Ciezo is a reference to being pregnant. Gravido is a reference to pregnancy in general. Hydro means water. Lacto means milk. Uh, pseudo means false or fake. Uh, toco means birth or labor. Uh, some suffixes. Ceasis uh, is pregnancy. Emesis is reference to vomiting. Ea is a condition. Urea is a flow or a discharge. And S is just the plural of a term. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, signs and symptoms of obstetrics. See the first one, amniorrhea. This is a flow or discharge of the amniotic fluid from the amniotic sac. Uh, dystocia. This is having a difficult birth. This can be caused by having an awkwardly positioned fetus or having a small pelvis or a failure of the uterus to, to contract normally or the cervix to dilate normally. So next term, hyperemesis gravidarium. This is the technical name for morning sickness. It was severe nausea and vomiting uh, while you're pregnant. You're vomiting several times a day. Some women have this, and it will last a few weeks. Some women have it the entire pregnancy. It just varies depending on each woman. Lactoria. This is the uh, spontaneous and excessive amount of milk production from the breast, regardless if you are nursing or not. There, next term, uh, polyhydraminos. This is, is an excessive uh, buildup of amniotic fluid around the fetus. Uh, pseudocyesis. This is the technical term for a false pregnancy. All right, now we'll talk about some diseases and disorders from obstetrics, some common combining forms. Uh, blasto. This is a developing cell. Chorio is a reference to the chorion, which is the outermost layer of a developing embryo. Erythro is a reference to uh, red. Fido is a reference to fetus. Uh, plasmo. Yeah, plasmo is a reference to uh, development or formation. Toxo is a reference to poison. Some common suffixes you'll see. Al is a reference to uh, pertaining to. Osis is an abnormal condition. And cis is the state of or a condition. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, specific diseases and disorders of obstetrics. The first one here, abruptio placentae. This is the premature separation of the placenta from the uterus. It's not common, but it's a very serious uh, complication of pregnancy. Your next term, a breech presentation. This is a reference to the position of the fetus during birth. Instead of coming out head first like it normally should, it comes out either feet first or buttocks first. The, uh, congenital anomaly is another term for a birth defect. So any structural or functional abnormalities or malformations that are present at birth would be a congenital anomaly or a congenital defect. Uh, some common examples of that are listed here. Uh, cleft palate is where the, the roof of the mouth, the palate, doesn't fuse all the way together. So there's a space 
which is why it's called a cleft palate. Their next one, esophageal atresia. This is where you have an atresia of the esophagus. The esophagus, instead of connecting to the stomach, ends up being a closed tube. A Down syndrome. This is a congenital uh, genetic defect where there's a, an extra chromosome in every cell. Instead of having the normal number of chromosomes that you should have is 46. People with Downs will have 47. Eclampsia. This is also called uh, PIH, pregnancy-induced hypertension. Eclampsia is a life-threatening complication of pregnancy where the woman has developed very high uh, blood pressure. And this high blood pressure often leads to uh, convulsions and is often followed by a coma after that. A very serious condition where you're putting both the mother and the baby at risk if the high blood pressure is not corrected quickly. Now this is often preceded by preeclampsia where a woman who is pregnant is diagnosed with having high blood pressure and also having high amounts of protein in her urine. And if preeclampsia isn't detected early enough and corrected early enough, this can easily lead to eclampsia, which is a very serious condition. Ectopic pregnancy. This is a type of pregnancy where the fetus will develop outside of the uterus and usually happens in the fallopian tube. All right, this illustration, we have examples of ectopic pregnancies. So if the fetus develops in the ovary, for example, that'd be an ovarian pregnancy. If it occurs in the interstitial space, that'd be an interstitial pregnancy. But a great majority of all ectopic pregnancies occur within the fallopian tube, but not every single one, but a great majority of them do. Is there a next term? Erythroblastosis fatalis, more commonly called a hemolytic disease of a newborn. This occurs where the there's an incompatibility between the blood of the fetus and the blood of the mother. And what's happening here is that incompatibility makes the mother's immune system think that the fetus is something foreign and needs to be attacked. And this typically isn't a problem for the first pregnancy as long as it's detected early enough and the mother is put on a, a drug called Rogam. But if this isn't detected or if the mother isn't given that drug, if she becomes pregnant again, the same thing will happen to the second fetus. The mother's immune system attacks and will eventually terminate the pregnancy, all because of the incompatibility between the fetal blood and the mother's blood. And this is how uh, that works. This all comes down to what's called the RH factor. And the RH factor is what's meant when you say, well, my blood type is O positive or O negative or A positive or A negative. That positive and negative component of your blood type is the RH factor. So if a male who is RH positive creates a baby with, and the mother is RH negative, if the baby's blood is RH positive but mom is RH negative, this is incompatible. The mother's body sees the baby's body as being something foreign. And whenever your body senses something that is foreign, its initial response is to attack it and destroy it. If there are enough antibodies built up in the mother's body, there can be enough to attack and destroy and terminate this pregnancy, all because of the incompatibility of the RH factors. Our next term, FAS, fetal alcohol syndrome. This is a congenital syndrome that's caused by the excessive consumption of alcohol by the mother while she's pregnant. This can lead to retardation of mental development of the child, a stunted physical growth. Now some of these complications can be mild, some of them can be severe, but they are irreversible. NRDS, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. It's also known as infant respiratory distress syndrome, or IRDS. It's primarily found in uh, babies that are born prematurely because the lungs have not fully developed yet. And because the lungs aren't fully developed yet, it's much more difficult for oxygen to get carried to the tissues. So that's why premature babies are almost always put on a respirator uh, right away to help them breathe. Another term for this is also RDS, respiratory distress of a newborn. Their next term, placenta previa. This occurs where the baby's placenta either partially or totally blocks off the mother's cervix. Our next term, uh, toxoplasmosis. This is a disease that's uh, caused by a a common parasite that's found in undercooked meat or in soil or also in cat feces. This infection typically isn't that big a deal to adults, but it can be very dangerous to an unborn baby. So this is why women who are pregnant should not handle uh, cat feces, should not be anywhere near a litter box. All right, this image, we have an example of uh, placenta previa, where you have the placenta blocking off or occluding uh, the cervix. As this gets larger and larger, you're gonna cut off uh, blood flow here. And right, I'll talk about some treatments, uh, procedures, and devices in regards to obstetrics. Uh, some word parts. Prefix, epi, means above. 
Uh, some common combining forms. Abordo is a reference to abortion. Amnio is a reference to the, the amniotic sac. Uh, duro is a reference to the dura mater. Episio is a reference to the vulva. Feto is a reference to a fetus. Obstetro is a reference to a pregnancy or birth. These some common suffixes. Al means pertaining to. Centesis is a puncture, usually to withdraw fluid. Ick means pertaining to. Ischian is a, a specialist. Metri is a process of measuring. And Tomi is a process of cutting. See our next term, abortion. This is the termination of a pregnancy. And there are different kinds. Uh, the first one, SAB, a spontaneous abortion. This is something that is a non-induced. So this is a, a natural death of an embryo, usually within uh, 20 weeks or less of development. Another term for this would be a miscarriage. Another example of an abortion would be a TAB, a therapeutic abortion. This is when an abortion is done in order to protect the life of the mother. Abortifacient. This is any product that will induce an abortion. Amniocentesis. This is the uh, withdrawing of the amniotic fluid while the mother is still pregnant to check the, the developing fetus for any abnormalities or any uh, diseases. Uh, C-section or cesarean section. This is where a baby is delivered through an, an incision in the woman's abdomen as opposed to a regular vaginal birth. Uh, contraception. Another term for uh, birth control. So this is the deliberate use of uh, artificial methods to prevent uh, pregnancy. Epidural block. This is a class of medicine that's given to women who are in labor and is administered in the epidural space and is done so to block the pain of childbirth. Physiotomy. This is a surgical cut into the vagina during a difficult delivery in order to help open up the vagina. Uh, photometry. This is a general term that means the, the measurement of a fetus, especially in the measurement of its head. And the way you would do that would be a, through a process called obstetrical sonography. This is using ultrasound to, to create real-time images of a fetus while they're in utero. So this is done to check the size of the fetus, make sure the development is going along as it should, used to check the, the sex of the baby. So all that would fall under the uh, obstetrical sonography category. And this is how that would look by using ultrasound to produce real-time images of the fetus while it's in utero and images will be up, up here on the monitor. The obstetrics, the field of medicine that deals with the, uh, the care and the treatment of women who are in childbirth and a specialist in that field would be an obstetrician. All right, now we'll talk about some uh, sexually transmitted infections, or STIs. The first one, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. Uh, this is the virus that leads to our next term, AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. These two are not the same thing at all. People still get uh, these two confused for some reason. But AIDS is the disease that is caused by the virus HIV. So you could be HIV positive and never develop AIDS. So one is only a reference to the virus. The other one is a reference to a syndrome which is caused by that virus. And having AIDS means you have a very, very compromised immune system where the smallest thing can make you incredibly sick. So next term, uh, candidiasis. This is an infection of a, a certain species of yeast called candida. And it's the most common type of uh, vaginal infections in women. A chlamydia. This is a, a bacterial sexually transmitted infection you know, passed on from person to person by sexual contact. And most people who, have, who are infected by this bacteria show no symptoms. So it's very easy to pass this on to other people because you have no idea that you are sick. Genital herpes. This is characterized by having uh, sores on the genitals. And these sores are going to be uh, fluid filled and very painful blisters. Gonorrhea. Indicated by having a yellowish uh, discharge that comes out of the end of the penis rather than the vagina. Also goes along with uh, severe itching and burning. Men tend to have painful urination. Uh, it's common for women to not have any symptoms at all. See, hepatitis B. It's an infection of the liver. The most common method of transmission for this version of hepatitis is sexual contact because you have to be exposed to uh, infected blood or infected uh, body secretions. So this will be found you know, in the blood, in the semen, in the breast milk, or in saliva. The HPV, human papillomavirus. This is the virus that can uh, cause uh, cervical cancer in women. The most common sexually transmitted infection. Uh, syphilis. This is a, a bacterial infection. Uh, it starts off as a, as a painless sore in the genitals. And this isn't uh, recognized or is not treated right away, 
can become fatal after a certain amount of time because this can lead to severe damage of the heart and of the brain. Shankers, this is having a, a painless ulcer that develops on the genitals. It's the very initial uh, lesions that indicates uh, syphilis. Trichomoniasis, this is an infection that's caused by a parasite and this will impact the uh, urinary tract and the vagina and the digestive system. This will often lead to uh, painful urination, severe itching, and a very foul smelling uh, discharge of the vagina. All right, now we'll talk about some abbreviations of the reproductive system and of obstetrics. AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. A BPH, benign uh, prosthetic hyperplasia. BX, abbreviation for biopsy. A CIN, a cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. CIS, carcinoma in situ. C-section, short way to write cesarean section. DNC, dilation and curettage. DRE, a digital rectal examination. ED, erectile dysfunction, FAS, fetal alcohol syndrome, FBD, fibrocystic breast disease, GYN, the abbreviation for gynecology, HBV, hepatitis B virus, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, HPV, human papilloma virus, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, HSV2, herpes simplex virus type 2, this is the strain of herpes virus that causes genital herpes, IDC, infiltrating ductal carcinoma, LEEP, loop electrosurgical excision procedure, NRDS, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, OB, obstetrics, OB and GYN, obstetrics and gynecology, pap smear, reference to the pap smear test, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, PIH, pregnancy induced hypertension, PMS, premenstrual syndrome, PSA, Prostate specific antigen, SAB, uh, spontaneous abortion, STI, sexually transmitted infections, TAB, uh, therapeutic abortion, TSS, toxic shock syndrome, TURP, transurethral resection of the prostate, TBS, transvaginal sonography. All right, we will finish this chapter with our combining form quiz. Terms on the left Masto, Bellano, Episio, Gravito, and Cervico. They'll match up to the terms on the right, either the vulva, pregnancy, neck or cervix, breast, and glans penis. Masto goes to breast. Milano goes to glans penis. Episio goes to vulva, gravido, pregnancy, cervico, the neck or cervix. And here are all five of the terms correctly matched to the definition. That brings us to the end of this chapter. This was one of the longer chapters that we'll have in this video series because we covered a lot of material. We will continue our video series on medical terminology with our next video on chapter number 13.